Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Doll Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today we are discussing Alex Garland's new Hulu series, Season 1, Episode 5, Devs. Make sure this is focused on me. Sorry, we're recording live too, so... Oh no, don't take a picture. Okay. So, if you've been following us uh, on all the social medias, or if it's your brand new first time listening to uh, the Lucky Doll Podcast, first of all, thank you for listening. Um, Sorry for a little technical difficulties right now. I'm trying to learn how to stream live better on uh, Twitch and other platforms so I can start offering it to... Uh, other clients and so just bear with me as I um, go through this little process but um, yes I am a TV movie digital media producer reviewer and and producer Um, my full-time job is in uh, digital media and I absolutely love it and so I came to the decision that I needed to um, there we go that I needed to um Start watching and listening to tons of new uh, podcasts, tons of new reviews. I'm gonna do this again. Sorry, we're still we're still gearing up for a brand new podcast. I'm trying to. I don't know why this isn't staying there. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lucky Doll Podcast. This is your host Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoshMedia.com, photo, video, digital media. Yes, we've made it. Season 1, Episode 5 of the new Alex Garland miniseries, Devs. It's been a fun and adventurous ride. We're going to discuss up to episode, through episode 5 of Spoilers. And that's as far as we have seen the show. Um, I'm really enjoying it. If this is your first time joining the podcast, go back and check out the rest of the shows. Go back and check out the rest of the reviews. Um, got tons of interesting, cool predictions and some maybe just a little some behind the scenes ana- analysis. Um, if you're your first time joining the Look at All podcast, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, we could not do this without you. So, um, episode five of Devs. That's what we will be discussing today. Trying to get our mind out of the. Uh, the COVID-19 crisis, so just get our head out of this pandemic. It is, uh, it's another level to say the least. Um, I don't want to break out the numbers or anything, but, uh, I think they're around, uh, 6,000 deaths so far of COVID-19 and we're only on our third or fourth week of lockdown, uh, unofficially. So, um, yeah, we're trying to keep our mind off of that and keep it on something a little bit more interesting, some, uh, you know, fictional sci-fi. So it's. Uh, I just wanted to say, preface this off the top, that uh, I mentioned that there was a coder in the last episode. It was, uh, I, I, I believe I referred to them as a young boy. It, the person is a non-binary or non-gender conforming coder that I'm meant to uh, I'm meant to bring up their name. Give me two seconds. I'm going to have their name up. Uh, but I mentioned this coder last uh, in the last review, and they were uh, canned uh, basically for not getting the exact al- algorithm that uh, Forrest was looking for, which is the Nick Offerman character. Um, so th- yeah, their name was a uh, Lyndon Kaylee Spawny. I didn't even recognize this person. Uh, com- uh, she's got a, a very short haircut. So I honestly didn't even recognize who it was. And she was actually in bad times at Royale. I didn't, didn't even at the uh, Royale. I didn't even recognize her. So, um, this episode is kind of jumbled out of sequence in a very, uh, visually interesting way. The reason I like this episode is because it's showing pretty much the entire uh, uh, backstory between um, uh, Lily's character, Jamie's character, what happened to Nick, how Nick and uh, 
Allison Pill's character, Katie, came together and uh, essentially what their ultimate goal is. And so I was um, I was very th- in, engaged in this episode. I, I enjoyed how it was shifting perspectives using the, the devs machine. So it starts off with uh, the love, uh, the intro of the deterioration of the relationships. And I was kind of uh, trying to see what exactly was going on. They were doubling the Lily character. They were doubling the Sergio character, doubling the Jamie character. They were going in and out of rooms, kind of showing the deterioration of the two um, uh, romances. Um, You can see how it was weighing on Jamie specifically. Um, Kenton, we find out after Kenton is you know, getting, whooping some ass, like literally beating the shit out of, uh, Jamie. We find out he was in the CIA and this actor is so damn good. I I just got to say, he knows how to play good cop and bad cop to a T. I was, uh, enthralled by his performance and I really enjoy what he's bringing. Uh, he probably knows CIA torture methods, which is what he was using on, uh, Jamie is what I would assume. Um, So let me see what else we got. Um, Jamie is being watched in the devs, just like all of these other scenes that were shown throughout this episode. Um, Lily is always apparently thinking three steps ahead of her in her mind. At least that's what her father was training her to do. Uh, It looked like they were playing some sort of game of chess, but it definitely wasn't chess. It was something else. I'll leave it to somebody else to tell me what game it was. I, I didn't get a chance to look it up. Uh, to look it up. Let me see. For this episode, uh, it took me a minute to realize that we're just shifting time using the devs machine. And it, it's an excellent storytelling device to go in the past and to the future without having to, um, you know, explain too many things in between the editing of the scenes. The transition in between scenes is very cool as well. It's kind of like this pixelated look. Almost looks like a really fancy screensaver in a way. I wonder if it's going to age well, though. I mean, sometimes, you know, CGI graphics and whatnot can age differently depending on how they're used. I wonder if this is going to age positively in this favor or not. Because, you know, speaking of CGI and other uh, special effects and whatnot, I did find that... The uh, effects on some of the cars later in this episode were not good, or they didn't look finished. Um, Let's see. The sound design for the transitions in between the dev machine are very cool, so I think that actually might serve it in its uh, its favor. In most of the Amaya um, flashbacks and whatnot, it's showing her blowing dandelions and bubbles I think in her room when when the dev machine is uh, recreating her I believe she's blowing bubbles and then in the actual corporation when they're walking around they have television monitors of a little girl like blowing dandelions I wonder if that's supposed to signify that there's the machine can almost um, predict what Amaya was doing or if something's You know, if it's predicting 99 percent, but that one percent is, you know, that one percent is not having her hair on her head or it's not having, um, you know, it's blowing bubbles instead of dandelions or dandelions instead of bubbles. I I, want to know what the imagery is for. Um, Let's see. I wonder which one's real. So this teacher that, uh, it appears she has some sort of muscular dystrophy in a way, Um, although she was able to stand up at one point. I'm not sure what the criteria criteria is to have that, if you can or can't. Um, She's discussing quantum particles and multiple places. Um, This stuff was starting to go way over my head. I was like, oh, shit. Um, And this is where Allison Pill's character, Katie, is bringing, this is where she's being kind of scouted from... uh, uh, by Forrest, she um, she brings up the Everett theory, and the Everett theory is having like a timeline, like trees. So if you take like a tree and it's has uh, 
you know, the single timelines going up and it branches into several different branches and those branches branch other branches and those are different. Think of those branches as timelines. And so that it's a pretty crazy theory to think about, kind of like the multiverse is what they're saying. Um, are we supposed to be tracking that there might be multiverses in this? Um, I, I, I wasn't exactly sure if that was... Um, adequate if, if that's what where this was actually going i'm not sure if that's going to make sense for for everybody across the board um let me see what else we got we have a uh, beautiful cinematography in this episode especially with the objects being placed in the multiverse Sorry, not in the multiverse, being placed in the devs machine or whatever this little testing thing they're doing with this dead rat, this clock and whatever else the fuck. Um, I can't really explain what they were doing, but it looked like they were trying to break down the particles of it and, you know, bring back life to this rat in some way. It, none of it, all of, sorry, all of it felt very metaphorical in a way that might be saying can this devs machine bring back life? Which I'm not really sh sure why that would be accurate. Just because it can predict something, I don't see where the apples to oranges are for this, um, for that. It, I don't know if that correlates, correlates if that's what they're trying to do. So we're talking about multiverses, bringing big people back to life. This, this is some craziness. Let's see. Yeah, and so we, we see um, this in a flashback with them bringing back the rat. We have uh, the young coder, Lyndon, again, as well as... I don't see the other coder. Oh, oh, Stephen McKinley Henderson Stewart, the uh, older coder. Um, let's see. I thought this sorry let me let me go back the machine glows until it shows Forrest's face and it sh and his daughter um and I believe that they're like cuddling what you know reading stories and whatnot so that's probably ultimately the goal to get some sort of reanimation of his daughter but I'm just not exactly sure you know in what particular manner oh god let me get this again Sorry, the camera's giving me a little shit. Okay, so, um, let me see what else. So, this next scene of Forrest losing his daughter, I, I, in like 10 seconds, I was able to brick deck everything that was going to happen. And I'm not sure if that's just predictive storytelling, easy story writing, um, you know, the guy that loses his daughter or family is just automatically distraught, and that's the guy that we normally follow. I mean, it's like the, the trope from every other movie. Um, mm, I had a very mixed feeling about how this was executed. He's just like, oh, oh, daughter, how are you doing? Or he's like, oh, Amaya, how are you doing? Oh, I see you in the car. You know, who walks out to the, uh, to the driveway and is on the phone with somebody and is saying... You know, oh, I see you right there. Oh, uh, you can wait to tell me in 30 seconds. I'll see you in two seconds. Boom! It's like, it was almost like too telegraphed. It, this felt like the first draft of this scene, and they didn't go back and rewrite it. I, I felt like the uh, Nick Offerman character, this felt like a parody. It almost didn't even feel real. I I don't know if everyone felt like that. I haven't. I'm not following other podcasts. I'm not going on finding any reviews. I'm the only person reviewing this, to my knowledge, besides uh, like James Hancock on YouTube. Uh, he does a pretty good roundup of them. But even then, I haven't found that uh, that this was satisfying for anybody. And it was almost for me. It was almost laughable. I was. It took me right out of the moment. I was really surprised that this was how it was executed. Uh, you know, I would have given his family a little bit more credit than that. Um, just, I don't know. Just, <laughs> he's like, oh, I see you coming down. The, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you in thirty seconds. What's he? He might as well say, 
what's the worst that could happen? And then, of course, they get in like a massive wreck as he's looking at it. And understand that he has to be down at the street to see the the repercussions of all of this. But like, you know, so we can see his reaction and it happening all in real time. But my God, I just <laughs> thought it was just goofy in a way. I don't know. It just took me really out of it. Uh, y'all let me know if you, you enjoyed the execution of this scene. I just feel like maybe it's the amount of time that we're spending with uh, Nick Offerman's character and his family, but it's like we're just told that they, he has, you know, a very nice life and there's not, you know, there's not terribly too much about it that uh, is explained. You know, he, he's such an ordinary guy. I, I don't really know what's much more to explain other than that. Um, let me let me adjust this mic just a hair. It's kind of leaning, I think. Oh, no, it's in my camera view. No. There we go. All right. I might be a little bit more intimate, but I can hear myself better. So, uh, yeah, I was I was laughing really hard about that. I, I just couldn't get over kind of the goofiness of it. All right, let's get this adjusted just a hair. All right, can you all hear me a little bit better? Hopefully it's uh, – I know it's not going to change for if you're watching live, but um, let me go back. There we go. No, don't take a photo. All right. Sorry, I, I'm kind of a stickler for the look and the sound. So if it doesn't look and sound the right way, I just like can't deal. Um, finishing up this episode, what else do we got? Um, yeah. Otherwise, I thought it was a, sl- a slightly sloppy execution of the loss of Forrest's family. Um, just contrived is what I what first thing that comes to mind and then after it it was topped off by really shitty CGI cars that I was not uh feeling I just was like all right first of all it was goofy how he lost his family and then all of a sudden we're having to watch these like fake cars run by it just did it wasn't believable for me at all so um Kenton in the next scene is worried about how it's all going down and he he clarifies that he doesn't know Kaylee is that true? I feel like Kaylee, sorry, KD, um, Allison Pill's character, Forrest's uh, right ho- right hand woman. Um, I thought that they had met or talked or something. I don't. I, I was kind of unclear about that. Um, let me see what else we got. The window at the psych ward is open. I know the beginning of this episode's with. Lily at the psych ward, and it's kind of implied that she's under... Well, in the last episode, it's predicted she's going to die in like 48 hours, so we've still got that on our mind. But in this episode, it looks like she's just drugged out, um, out of her mind. We see Jamie scared shitless. Katie's going through all these flashbacks. And uh, then at the very end, Jamie goes to rescue... Um, after telling his folks to go, you know, to get safe, he tells Lily, or he, he, he breaks into the psych ward to get Lily out. Um, which I'm kind of worried about Jamie. Kenton does not seem like he gives a shit. Um, like he'll, he'll take him down, but he, Kenton is worried that he's going to have to go down for these murders. I'm like, why is this a conversation everyone's having now? Like if, if the cards are folding, if, if everyone's packing up and going home, if, Forrest and Katie are just going to put uh, him out to dry. I I would understand that, but there aren't cops like looking around in this season. I'm not sure what's what exactly it is, but we kind of jumped from the the company kind of just being working behind the scenes to all of a sudden, you know, there's there's supposed to be like cops snooping around and I feel like there's a big lack of security around the police in this and they're just kind of automatically working for um what's his face for uh the Amaya company and for Kenton. I don't understand why Kenton is worried about this all of a sudden and saying that he's not going to go down. It's like, hmm. Uh was was that the plan the it, it didn't seem like you were ever planning to go down in in the first place. So I'm not really sure why that was a a problem. This is still going down. 
see if I can adjust this. Sorry, y'all. Oh, this is like 10 times better. For my back, at least. <laughs> for my burp. I can adjust this just to here. All right. Hopefully that's not too distracting with all these fucking cords. I don't know. Y'all are getting the behind the scenes. All right. Um, right. Let's see. So the window at the psych ward's open, like, that's not believable at all. If you've looked at any psych ward, that's never happened in the history of ever. Um, definitely would not believe that. Let me see what else. This credit music, it, it felt like the same kind of music that was happening when, uh, what's his face? Kenton was uh, harassing or, or terrorizing, torturing Jamie, whatever you want to call it. Um yeah, it's like this. It's like this breathing music, and it's almost tribalish in a way. It's like, God dang, just it's a it's creepy ass sound sound mix they got going on. But uh, yeah, it was what well, it was a great episode, with the exception of, uh, in my opinion, of how they executed the uh, Forrest family. Um. I'm just assuming that he lost his wife and his daughter in that accident. I don't remember if we've gotten any um, confirmation on that. I wonder if it's more elaborated in the books or something. But anyways, thank y'all for listening, watching Lucky Doll Podcast. Um, sorry, this stream's kind of like wonky a little bit. I'm still trying to get the uh, uh, the setup all, you know, quote unquote, set up and make sure it looks and sounds uh appropriate and um yeah we couldn't do this without your support look at our podcast check it out um check us out on soundcloud youtube uh facebook instagram all the popular uh social medias we we, we are out there let me uh pull up the, the list if you want to support the podcast support the podcast in the hard times only if it's you know, okay in your wallet too. I don't want to take anything from you that you might need uh, for your table, for your family, for your business. Only donate if it's um, appropriate for you too. And obviously that's uh, extremely helpful for us on our end. Helps us keep the streams going, keeps the, uh, the streams flowing. And, you know, things are not cheap to uh, look and sound this good. So we're constantly updating and um, getting better streaming gear and equipment and everything that you donate goes directly into it um i just wanted to let everyone know i hope everyone is saying staying super safe out there in the covid19 crisis it's literally the shutdown of the economy uh worldwide economy just shut shut her shut her down um we've got the email the lucky dog podcast at gmail.com for comments questions concerns twitter lucky dog podcast facebook twitch instagram youtube discord we are on all the social medias you need thank you let us know how we can improve the podcast let me know how you like the episode of devs and um you already know what to do take it easy